Yo, welcome Frony. So we did get the final patch notes for the global release and I want to go over it. I'm going to focus on what has everything changed from open better to the launch version and give a couple of insights because many of those changes are already live in Korea and I've already played them. So the first thing they are mentioning here is the skill specializations. They have basically put over 250 in. That is an addition to skills that changes their damage, changes their outcome, maybe turns them from fire into ice. If you want a deep dive in this, I have a full video for all weapons that exist on my channel. And it will go over all the skills and all the skill specializations that you can use. The next thing they're talking about is the life skill content consisting out of fishing, cooking, and Amidoi expeditions. And here also I have guides available for this on my channel already in depth to get you prepared for the global launch. Then we are having the weekly missions. Those work in a way that um, you have lots of tasks, but you do not get a reward for completing all of those tasks. Basically completing those tasks will unlock a board and in that board you can then choose the best reward fitting for you. So the weekly mission will only give you one reward per week, but the more tasks you are unlocking, the more rewards you get that you can choose from. And next up, dynamic event co-op. You are actually getting quests that all the community, all the players in that event have to solve together. And the more of those quests they are solving, they will in the end spawn a boss that they can defeat for the loot. Now let's go to 3v3 arena, my personal favorite content of the whole game. I like it a lot. It allows you to go as a solo player or as a party player. You will now have seasons. In Korea, the season one already started. You can earn, um, ranks similar to like League of Legends where you can get Challenger. Here you can get, I think it's called Imperator or something like this. And um, you can also earn rewards because you can farm a currency that you can then use in the arena shop. So when we are talking about leveling and progression, um, I would say there's not much to say. For this change, I have already updated my leveling guides. Go check it out if you don't know what the best pathing is yet. One interesting change that I also want to mention here is that they've increased the level of the auction house from level 15 to 40. And I think this is a really good thing. There was a big issue with RMT and low level characters in the auction house. And maybe this helps to solve it or at least makes the pain um, bigger when they get banned. Another thing that I want to lay my eye on is the adjust the milestone system pacing. I'm going to be curious how this turns out because the milestone system is basically locking the content for the community. So let's say you have to do like a certain quest as a whole server together to unlock the next open world event, for example. And those milestones can either hinder hardcore players a lot by not being able to progress the way they would, or they could be beneficial for a less hardcore audience to have the feeling that they can keep up. I personally think there's not a lot of sense in limiting hardcore players. They will just spend less in your game and casuals um, usually can never keep up no, no matter what mechanism is implemented. So I really hope that that pacing is not capping hardcore players because then you will have like the, the player base that is also usually the most loyal to your game and you will make those um, players angry, I think that would be a really bad thing. So to make it short here on the uh, um, arch boss weapons, basically they have nerfed almost all of them by a bit, but not too much. Um, the only thing that it didn't nerf was the Queen Balandir's crossbow, for example, but this one was already nerfed um, in previous patches. So even though it's not mentioned here, it is nerfed. Then for the weapons, I don't want to go over it too much. Um, you know, I'm a crossbow dagger player, so I'm going to focus on crossbow dagger. I will link it, of course, if you're interested in any of the other weapon changes. So we did get a buff on the dagger here to um, get higher base damage more often on our mobility skills by having a cooldown reduction. But we are also getting a slight nerf for the offhand double attack chance decreases from 30 to 26%. Then we're having an interesting change on the Malakar's crossbow, where we are going from a 20% offhand attack and chance to a 28 one and that is quite important because the Kovarzan crossbow is doing getting the same also it's now giving like half the value at night so also somewhat valuable the reason why that 
change from 20 to 28 is so important because in the current spin to win builds for crossbow dagger the rex shimmerous crossbow is best in slot because it has the 35 percent offhand double attack chance and that is now being reduced to 25 so i will do some math and figure out um, how that change is impacting the build and as always, I will keep the build updated so you know what to do for the launch. Similar goes with the set effects. A couple of them got nerfed. On our crossbow dagger, we are wearing Ghost Wolf and um, Crit Damage set. And they both got nerfed. So I will do a check and do the calculations again with those changed values and update the guide accordingly. When it comes to combat and build diversity, they have done something that I have already mentioned multiple times in stream that they should do and they did it. And that is they are making the um, most of the skills unlock early. So you don't have that like, oh yeah, you get one skill at level 50. When basically some people will not even reach level 50 if they get bored because they don't have enough variety. And skill specializations are available at level 15. This is already available quite a while in Korea. And then overall balance, I would say the highest critique at the moment was that dagger is like almost the best in slot um, offhand weapon all the time. No? Because it offers so many passives especially crit chance and they have now taken the first approach to like get that matter from dagger offhand um, switching by removing the critical hit chance of the dagger and instead giving it a debuff to decrease um, enemies defense then all of those new skills here that got mentioned they are already live in korea and they are already in my videos so if you're interested in those how they look uh, what scalings they have um, you can find it on my channel already so this skill change here even though it's live on korea for a while i do want to talk about it so some people are not getting confused um it used to be that if you're but if you're getting skill books you will basically get a um, a skill book specific to a weapon they have removed this so now you basically have like a queen skill book and you can use it on all weapons no matter what that was already a great increase and now they are making it so when you level up a green skill to a blue skill and a blue skill to a purple skill they have always gotten additional stats so back then it was extremely important to rush certain skills to epic while maybe leaving other skills at green level one and completely ignoring them and now the skills already have their full effects at the start and you're only increasing the value of upgrading those skills and this allows a more fast paced more fun early game where you can use more advantages from skills already together it's similar to making skills available more early this is solving one of those problems and another thing that is really nice about this is you can now balance out upgrading those skills a little bit more so it's maybe not as effective as rushing your main damage skill to purple right away. Then maybe it's better to go your main damage skill to blue and then getting your second damage skill to blue and so on. No? And of course, I have already updated my guide according to this new level strategy for the skills. Then one new stat got added that I want to talk about a little bit. Um, this is the critical hit damage reduction. You know, we have talked about it in other videos already that you always have a counterpart in front of liberty so bonus damage is against damage reduction evasion is versus hit and critical hit damage did not have a counterpart so far and now you can actually reduce the critical hit damage that someone that is attacking you is getting onto his skills by building critical hit damage reduction and i think this is a interesting stat because that could influence our crossbow dagger build also quite a lot here i'm also going to do a couple more um, calculations especially how this is being gained compared to the nerf of the set so basically that could be like a double nerf especially with the rune system that got implemented we are now having shield block penetration chance that means a sword and shield player that has a basic block this block can now be removed by stacking that stat and i gotta say that stat is really good in arena or in pvp in general so i will try to get as many as that as possible especially because sns great sword and sns wand are currently the highest tier build and lots of players are going to play them prior to that patch it was really easy to uh, um, cc chain premise cc someone without having the ability to give any counterplay that lays into yourself it was only possible that other players would maybe remove the cc so um, like in small scale it was almost not viable and now they are having a stone also i didn't mention it but they also have a potion now in game where that you can craft and this will 
remove all the CC effects from you. It does have a two minute cooldown, but um, it still allows for a lot more counterplay. And additionally to that, that people cannot be CC chained, you will have um, a CC immunity system. So that means if you get CC'd over and over, at some point the game will say, okay, that's enough and you cannot get CC'd anymore. This, is, I would say it's not tweaked at the moment that you're benefiting from that that much if you're a DPS, but if you're a tank, you're currently benefiting from that. If they maybe start changing that system a little, so it's triggering that immunity based on your health that you have, like your total health number. So it can, the game can differ between a tank and a DPS. And maybe a tank gets the immunity a bit later than a DPS. And I think that system would be really balanced out really well. I still got to say, even though with all of those changes, the overall settings of the game are really bad. If you have any questions on how to do the settings, I have a full video on it also on the channel. Go check it out. It goes over everything. And I can tell you, do not play the game with the default settings. You need to make your custom settings to enjoy the game. When we're talking about PvP balance, they did mention that they are having a power scaling now in level zones. Um, I personally think that power scaling was not done well um, because it's only scaling down your health and your mana, for example. And it's not um, scaling down, like, for example, your skill level, your gear, your overall damage or whatever. So even with this balance system, you can still go into low level areas and still demolish everything that is coming into your way. All the miscellaneous changes here, I would say like an important one is that you are not longer losing EXP and have to buy all of that back with Solent. That means one of the big Solent things for especially new players in the early game is gone, making it more enjoyable. I think that is a really good change. Another one that's worth mentioning is that treasure goblins have made it into the game. I'm coming from Diablo 4, so for me, Treasure Goblins is a daily thing, and I really loved it, like hunting them, maybe finally figuring out strategies on how to farm them the fastest, documenting all the spawn points. Um, like, I don't know, like, I think this random high reward spawned creatures in any game are a really nice add on because it makes the whole world more more interesting like even though you're high level you might want to visit low level areas just to farm treasure goblins and stuff like this and then two more things here about the um, progress of getting gear a big critique point was that um, dynamic events are sometimes not worth it especially in regards of runes so a dynamic event it's giving you runes but if you would do challenging circle instead like a low, a way more low effort way of gaining runes, you would actually get more value for the same time spent in the event. But the event that is only hosted like a couple of times a day should give you like that boost, right? You want people to be going to the event and not saying, oh no, it's not worth it. I rather spend my time somewhere else. So I really hope that they have got that tweaking right here. And also they have made um, crafting a little bit more accessible by reducing the cost for equipment. Let's say you're playing the game, you want everything of your gear probably in the early game to be blue, but what you want to have purple is your main weapon. And what people do is they will go and farm all level 50 dungeons to drop dimensional charts of those dungeons to then craft a guaranteed purple weapon of their choice. And this what well, this process was now made easier, which as an addition also makes it easier to trade that purple weapon and probably makes the playstyle of rushing one purple weapon going rest blue gear the most viable in the early game for PvP. Yeah, that was it, guys. If you still have any questions, just leave a comment. As always, I will answer anything in 24 hours. Cheers, guys.